Hello and welcome back and today we're going to continue looking at WD Red versus WD Red Plus. We're looking at DMSMR drives or drive managed uh, shingle magnetic recording versus uh, CMR or conventional magnetic recording drives. We've been carrying on with this. We're on stage uh, two of our testing. In the first stage or video one, we looked at building a RAID 5 environment on both of them. We took three 3TB drives from each different variant of the AX and RX series, with the AX being the SMR and the RX being CMR, and we built a RAID 5 with both of them. If we have a look inside, we have three discs there, and then we had three discs there, three of the AX, three of the RX. We then built two separate volumes, and with volume one, we fully occupied it with those drive managed SMR drives, and in volume two, we created the system of conventional magnetic recording drives in their own RAID. So we've got the storage pools already done. They've both got, um, again, in that RAID 5, just shy of 6 TB of storage currently available on both of them. And in today's video, we're going to fill these drives to the limits. In part one, if you didn't already catch it, what we did was build a RAID 5 on both of them and see how long it took, and the drive uh, managed SMR drives actually built a great deal quicker. And we put that down to the fact that the SMR drives arrived with 256 megabytes of cache, which they need for SMR and the overlapping system of layers that they use in terms of their read and write. And then during downtime, SMR drives can then reorganize the data later. And again, that's what you need that extra cache for and ultimately how that RAID could be built so much quicker. But SMR, as many will tell you, does have its limitations with regards to consistent and heavy write loads as well as RAID rebuilding. And that's why we're going to be looking at these in both today's video and the next video where we will do RAID 5 rebuilding. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fill these volumes of data. What we've done in both of these, on both of them, we've created on each storage pool a volume. And in those volumes, we have created one big folder in each of them. So in the drive managed SMR volume, we have got a folder here that is filled with 1.07 terabytes of data. That data there is on the SMR portion. And as you see, 1.07, we're going to create several duplicates of that file. Ultimately, we want, what we want to do is generate more than 5.47 terabytes a day. We want to fill the disk to capacity and see how long it takes for it to do it. So we've got a full drive for when we do the RAID pull in our next video. Then we're gonna repeat the exact same procedure on the, sh on the um, conventional magnetic recording drives to see if it's any quicker or slower and ultimately see what the difference is between them. So what we're gonna do now is first go into the DMSMR drive there that's already got 1 TB of storage of, uh, used up and it's got 4 TB available. So what we're going to do is create four more copies of this data and that should practically fill the drive. It will get it right the way to the limits of how much space the drive has. So we're going to click copy there. Then we're going to create those folders. Create another folder. another one one more for luck and of course a fifth one and this is the one that's going to push things over the limit because at these four we've got just enough space in the system in order to do it but even then the fifth one will push it over the limit just to be on the safe side so what we're going to do now is copy that data and then we're going to copy it into each of those directories. Now I'm aware I could just use this system to do it, but we need to make sure it's all on camera recording us doing it on here. And while it does that, we'll then be able to use a lot of these parameters here to see just how long this test has started. So we've done the copy, do that once again for luck, and we're gonna go in and paste them into each directory one by one. Eventually, the system will say that there is no space left in the device. We'll go there, 
will open up the view there. And as you see there, we are creating an operation that is going to create more data than we have space for inside the system. So if we go into the overview, we'll leave the overview there. And then what I'm going to do is return to this system when this operation is done. This is going to take quite a lot of hours to be done. And at the same time, we're going to keep a watchful eye up here on these parameters here at the top, because these are going to be how we know when everything's um, done and when it's finished. And therefore, we can use these values to ascertain when this is going to be done down to the very last file that is recorded. So let's fast forward to the completion of this exercise, which I'll almost certainly not have on record because I'd have to leave screen recording going for upwards of a day. But let's fast forward to see how long it takes for the DMSMR uh, drives to fill their total RAID 5. Right, so we filled the entire RAID 5 of drive managed SMR disks, as you see here, and we've overfilled those drives just as we planned. There's been errors here on screen. I'm arriving the morning after doing this test, and as you see here, there's lots of alerts here on screen telling us that storage space was insufficient. So if we go into the alerts record, no doubt here we have all of the issues here running in the background with regards to that storage space. And we can see that the drives completely filled at 11.58, just before midnight there on the SHR. So we're gonna go ahead and enter those figures there uh, on the database here on the other screen just afterwards. And then what we're gonna do now is begin the now follow-up of the exact same test utilizing this time the CMR, Conventional Magnetic Recording Drives, to see how they fare versus the DMSMR. Now, the one thing I will say is the system is being extraordinarily sluggish right now. So before I go any further, I am gonna free up some of the room that's being occupied there by all of that data. So in the SMR, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete one of those blocks. So moving forward, you're going to see that difference there in terms of overall capacity showing. Um, this is gonna knock somewhere in the region, I believe about a terabyte um, off of this. It might knock off a little bit more of that. And it, if we update the storage manager, that should hopefully mean that the system's gonna run a little bit smoothly uh, because we are definitely seeing a little bit of sluggish behavior there in the background. Um, so it's going to take a little while to remove that space before we begin the next test because the last thing I want is the overfill of this drive impeding and undermining the results there of the CMR test. So I'm just going to fast forward to the deletion of one of those blocks of data that we've put on that volume one and there, then we can start on repeating this test on the CMR RAID 5 here on volume two. Right, so we freed up the space there on the main storage pool on our SH, I'm sorry, SMR volume there. We've got rid of some of that data there. We've knocked off a little bit and the system's being considerably more responsive. I'll leave the resource monitor on there. And now we're gonna go ahead and repeat that exact same test to see how long it takes to fill up the drives on the CMR pool. Now I did the calculations and it works out at approximately nine hours and 43 minutes is how it looked, how long it took to fill up this RAID 5 three disc DMSMR pool. So now let's go into the CMR pool there. We've got our one terabyte of data there already set up. I'm gonna let it calculate the size just to confirm that that is indeed the case. At the moment, the system is complaining that volume one is running out of space, but that's something we're very acutely aware of. And as that works out, there's our 107, uh, 1.07 TB of data. I'm gonna go ahead and click copy. And now, just like before, where we created those drives, we're gonna go ahead and create our drives numbered one through five. like so. And then once again, we're gonna begin the timing there. It's 9.07 a.m. here. So let's go ahead and start copying that data in. That's our first one. Uh, 
I get all of them. I think I may have missed three there. Let's bung in number three. There we go. There are our five copy operations happening all at the same time there. So we're going to leave those to do their thing. Remember that what the time we're looking at here is 9 hours 43 minutes to fill up the ESMR drives. So it'll be interesting to see how long it takes this CMR, conventional magnetic recording storage pool, to get the job done. Let's fast forward to the completion of this exercise. Right, so we've made our way back to the screen, and as you can see, Volume 2, aka the storage pool that was utilising the CMR WD Red Plus drives, has filled to the gills. It is absolutely full here, as you see, and that ended at 6.59 um, so uh, 6.59 p.m. So I've already entered that into our stats. I've already got it there. But before we go any further, just to get ready for the next video, because there's going to be performance problems here, we're going to go ahead and delete once again one of those um, stacks of data because we want to make sure we've got exactly the same amount of data in both of them. So let's hide that there. And while it does that, let's take a look at our stats. So both drives took pretty much the same amount of time to fill. There's a difference between them of about nine minutes. And I'll be honest, I'm quite surprised. I kind of assumed that the uh, DM SMR drives would suffer problems later on down the line. And I know the leveraging of write on these on these drives is less um, of a problem in what we're doing here. But I will say that I kind of assumed that the CMR drives would um, be noticeably different, either higher or lower. And the fact that both of them have done the job in roughly the same amount of time is actually quite surprising, particularly given the slight architectural differences, firstly, of that writing and reading technique that is being employed um, within these different methods, but also, of course, the difference between SMR and CMR, the difference between these drives in terms of the cash utilisation. With that large amount of cash on the traditional standard red that's got SMR and the CMR newer plus series with 64 meg of cash. So again, we'll leave it there to delete those files there in the background. I will say, for those of you that noticed it in the previous um, um, skip forward on the other video, deletion is certainly happening a lot quicker on volume two this time around. When the previous volume was filled up, there was a huge amount of sluggish behavior in the system, something that's not present here. And I don't know if there's much we can read into that, but one would argue that, you know, the deletion is part of this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to let that delete, and then I'm going to start preparing for video three in this series. What I'm going to be doing is pulling a drive from both of the systems. I'm going to be starting once again with the SMR volume um, and or the DM SMR volume of WD Red 3 TBs in a RAID 5 and I'm going to pull one of these drives. The system's going to go into degradation. I'm then going to do a very quick read and write performance test while the RAID is in degraded mode and then I'm going to wipe the drives that I remove and then reintroduce that fresh clean drive to the system to see how long it takes it to rebuild that RAID when it's 84% capacity filled. Do check out that video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this um, video. Click like. If you enjoyed the video, click subscribe to learn more. I'm sorry it's not the most exciting video today, but sometimes when we experiment, the results are just plain dull. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video.